check, check. One, two. Thank y'all for joining us once again on a Sunday. It's 7 o'clock. 7.02. But uh, we're getting things started. This is the Mobile Music Production and DJing Workshop. This is the third week of us doing this. We got one more week. And um, we are going to get busy with this right now. Let me just do a quick... Uh, camera switch all right what's going on YouTube uh, Facebook and everybody else checking this out this is your boy DJ logic aka logistical styles coming back at you with another workshop once again this is sponsored by the Fulton County Arts and Culture Department made possible by the Fulton County Board of Commissioners so I want to give a big shout out to them for making this possible um, and seeing the vision and helping artists like me continue to put forth um, our artwork or you know still be able to reach out to uh, the community so what I want to do is um, do a quick review of what we were looking at um, over the past two weeks we did uh, music production on apps like Launchpad we use Blockswave, uh, IMPC Pro and we went over those to um, make beats on our iPads or our iPhones and um, what we're going to do this week is we're going to actually going to be DJing with some of those beats and uh, some beats I made in between. So um, we're going to get into that. And then next week, I'll probably just do a whole setup. Uh, the last hour will just be a culmination of everything. So I'll just do a whole set um, DJing using the uh, iPad strictly and using just music I made on the iPad. But uh, today we're going to go over... Um, some apps specific, specifically I'm going to be looking at the um, DJ Pro app and this is the app that I came across a while ago been using it but I was using it as a backup solution for when I go out to do mobile gigs or when I'm even in like um, um, bar situations or whatever I would use these as a backup device or it's my iPad and I would use these apps as a backup to um, in case anything went wrong with the main rig but as I started looking at them, I started seeing that uh, they have really been improving and uh, adding a lot of features that you find in regular um, software that you find on your laptop. So what we, we're going to do is uh, look at some of these features and uh, specifically I, uh, DJ Pro because this is one that has really been growing. And if you watch any of the uh, Apple events when they introduce a new product like an iPad or even laptops or whatever, they always use this uh, specific brand of software to uh, showcase how DJs could use their new hardware or whatever. Um, now we're going to look at it a little bit and we're going to take a, a deeper dive into it and see some of the new features because some of the newer features that just came out have been um, really cool and they do match some of the stuff that you see now in other um, software that allows you to do stuff like remove music or re remove the vocals and give you acapellas. You can do that now with apps like um, DJ Pro. So um, with that said and done, let's switch over. Uh, if you look over here, this is right here, the um, screen share from the iPad. And that is what DJ Pro looks like. What I did um, was load some sounds into it or some songs into it and we'll play those and mainly I'm doing that for copyright issues so I can't be using um, commercial music in these videos without getting worried about getting flagged so let's jump into for those that are since this is like a really general class for those that are very new to DJing um, this is a, a DJ not even a traditional but it's somewhat of a traditional DJ rig it's two decks and a mixer and what I, as the DJ, am doing is I'm mixing songs from one deck and transitioning into the next song on the next deck. So um, these are controllers, but I also have a turntable over there that, um, you know, is how things originally started with uh, club DJing, as far as we know it, or as we know it, you know, currently, you know, with DJs providing music for an audience they had two record players turntables and they would go from song a or deck a into deck b using a mixer which allowed you to change the volume uh, coming out of one into the other so that's some real basic overview of djing as i'm going to be approaching it and teaching it with this so that's how a lot of apps also 
approach it when they come to um, to you with a DJ app. They always show you, and let's switch over so you can see a bigger view of the iPad. They always show you the two decks and the crossfader because basically what you're doing is you're going from deck A to deck B and you're using the crossfader to make the change. So this app for um, the DJs who are a little bit more into it and know what I'm talking about, I don't have to go too basic with y'all, but this app right here uh, basically simulates everything you would see on screen like with, well, not everything, but all the important stuff that you would see on like a virtual DJ screen, a Serato screen, tractor, record box, um, all the main DJ softwares that people use for DJing, it, it's set up the same way. Now, because this is all done on an iPad or iPhone, um, there are gonna be some uh, things that are different because this is a touch device. So I'm actually being able to manipulate everything with uh, my fingers by touching the screen. Um, the turntables, they react just like a regular turntable would. Um, the needle, you can actually move the needle to needle drop or at least try to get uh, the playhead closer to the part of the song that you want to um, jump to. You've got your pitch control over here, all touch, uh, touch sensitive, so you can control it just by touching the screen and grabbing it. And you got your readout for your BPM up here, so you can see uh, how fast it is. You can edit it if it, the software is not getting it right, or you can even just tap it, like on regular software, where you're able to just tap the uh, space bar or some other key to tap out your tempo. You can do the same thing with this particular app. And um, let's see. Of course, there's the sync button, and a lot of purists who uh, started on vinyl or anti-sync, but I look at it like this. If you're at the point where you're trying to figure out how to DJ from a iPad or iPhone or some other mobile device, you really have no leg to stand on as far as talking about sync being cheating or sync not being real DJ. Um, you're definitely going to want to uh, look into learning how to use sync if you're going to attempt to even or learn how to DJ with this iPad stuff. So it's a very useful tool. Then over here you have your looping where you can turn loops on and off. You can adjust the loop size to, you know, increments of two and four. You can also choose to monitor. Now with this setup, you have to get some adapters if you want to be able to do things that a normal DJ would do with their setup. So for instance, with me as a DJ, I would use headphones to cue up the next song. If I've got a song playing here, I'm going to you know, hit my cue button and listen to what's playing here to get it up to speed and get it uh, in sync so I can mix in this with the next song. So in order to do that on the iPad, because your hardware is kind of limited as far as your in and outs go, you have to get adapters, and especially with uh, the current iPads and uh, iPhones, because they use a lightning port. Uh, a lot of them don't have the headphone jack anymore. This particular iPad I'm using here, this is a, um, this is a sixth generation iPad. So, this, I think, was discontinued in 2018. And then, you know, iPads, they kind of have a longer life than the phone. So I think the next one that did come out after that is still the current model. So the 2019 is still uh, current, unless you start looking at the iPad Pros or the iPad Airs. But um, this is a very generic iPad. It's not, you know, souped up. It's basically what you can get for $299 at uh, any big box store now. So uh, what I was getting to is the fact that this iPad or this model happens to still have a headphone jack. So I'm able to run my sound that you're hearing from the iPad when I'm playing music is going to come from my headphone jack into my actual real DJ mixer to feed into the broadcast laptop. But um, if you want to 
take that out of the equation. If you just want to use this, you would have to have an adapter that would allow you to split the sound up so you can cue up using these buttons, which is how I got here. These two buttons right here allow you to cue or pre-listen to the song you're about to bring in. But you need a certain adapter that can split your signal to send one channel out to your main and the other out to your headphones that you would be listening to. Um, I priced those out. I saw those on Amazon going for about $15 to $20, depending on uh, what brand you get. But uh, if you're just getting into learning how to mix from song A to song B on here, you don't really need that at this point. You really just want to focus on learning the controls of this um, app. So let's jump back into it. Let's get... Uh, this right here. All right, so these are your Q buttons, the ones that are turning blue. Those are allow you to listen. And then we did pitch control. You have your start stop button right here. And you'll notice that when I do hit stop, stop, it does have a little drag to it. You can go into your settings and you can adjust that drag just like you can do with, um, I know you you can do it with Serato. I'm a Serato DJ user, so um, a lot of the things that I'm going to be looking for or explaining within this app relate to my workflow in Serato. But Serato uh, as a whole, it's very, um, I believe if you know how to use Serato, you can learn how to use the other software programs. I think Tractor might be the only one that's a little bit more uh, in depth or involves a little bit more reading and researching to really learn how to use it. But the other, everything else is pretty much set up the same way. Um, there are certain key, um, certain shortcuts that might be different, but you can look in the manual and find out how to translate that stuff. Um, there's also a power off and power on button. I'm not sure how often people would use that, but this button right here, it powers on. Just like a regular turntable, it's even got the strobe light so you can see it's just there for looks so you're not going to use that but it's cool that you can just power it off and do a wind down instead of just start stop then uh, to go beyond that um, on this mixer you see I have my EQ so in order to get to your EQ on the app you would hit this mark down here this button these two buttons that I'm hitting back and forth from toggling those switch you between um, Actually, no, that's not the, oh yeah, okay, it brings you to where you can get to your EQ. Your EQ is actually down here. Once you come into this menu, you can come down here, and then you have your EQ. But uh, the first thing that they bring you to, and this is because this is a new feature in the app, this right here, this Neural Mix that I'm highlighting, this is, I think, a new, new, one of the newer features in the apps, and it allows you to um, remove either the instrumental portion or the vocal por portion of a track and uh, it's actually somewhat effective it's not a perfect acapella you do hear some um, shadowy or some remnants or a reverb almost but it's it's enough if you're mixing that acapella in with some other sounds or other music then um, you can definitely get by with a good remix and as we start getting into this a little bit more the remixing portion of this is really dope so i'm going to try to speed this up a little bit because um if you go here you got your effects section so if you wanted to uh pull up different effects phaser bit crusher i never was a fan of bit crusher um reverb you can just drag your finger across, almost like the uh, the Core Chaos pads, pads from back in the day. So you can use your finger to swipe it across through this um, pad right here to ch adjust your effects. Then you got your cue points. You can set up a large number of cue points here. Um, see that? So I'm triggering them. They're colored. You can change the different colors, I believe, but uh, it's very it's very responsive. Uh, and the iPad has been responsive for touch uh, apps like this because I also use this with Serato Remote, which I may try to pull up uh, 
for my next session to show you that as well. But this allows you to, I mean, you just tap it and it just triggers it just like it was a, a regular push in type button. So those are your cue points. Then I already showed you your EQ filter as well. So it's not a total kill EQ. You can still hear a little bit of the frequency you're trying to kill, but you can still definitely adjust your EQ with um, this right here. Then if you want to get out of that and get back to your deck, and what's cool, what I really liked about this is it emulates like old school vinyl tricks. It puts little colored dots where you put your cue points, almost like the little dots, we stickers we used to use back in the day on our vinyl to be able to mark certain parts, parts of the record so we can jump to it really quick. And that's cool because you can just pull your needle right there and pretty much at that cue point. Now, if you want to do a quick uh, temporary cue point, like a hot cue, you can hit this set button down here and that throws one on and you can play. And if you hit this little arrow that points back to that, that's how you can trigger that cue point. So that uh, is handy because you don't always want to have to jump into that screen and then go into your cue point screen to just trigger a cue point. Sometimes you want to be able to trigger a cue point right away, especially if you're trying to bring the next song in on the one, you want to be able to just and release it. So that's pretty handy to have that where you can jump back into um, that temporary cue point. Now, as far as uh, your library, the library uh, just goes on what's in your, what's actually on your iPad. So if you have a lot of songs that are stored in the cloud, um, you're not going to be able to use them. So you're going to have to store songs locally on your iPad, which is actually going to take up a lot of space. And if you use this iPad for a whole lot of other stuff, you probably have a ton of apps that have their own um, store of data that take up space on the iPad. So I would say if you're going to be serious about using your iPad for any kind of DJ and stuff, you might want to kind of dedicate it to that uh, and get the biggest size iPad that you can afford to get because you're going to run out of space or be prepared to um, manage your music on your iPad according to whatever gig you're doing. So you're not going to have your whole library on your iPad. You may have to just import, sort, import certain playlists depending on what the gig is. So, you know, family reunion, pull in that family reunion playlist, you know, wedding playlist. If they give you requests, put those in there. That way you'll have them on the iPad. And there's a couple of ways you can get stuff, songs onto the iPad. And as I've been going through this course and putting this course together, I'm realizing that I'm happy I started with making beats on the iPad because this is really cool because you can actually just create songs on your mobile device and just airdrop it right into the app. So what I was doing is on my other iPhone, I was pulling up Launchpad, which we went over last week. Uh, so I had Launchpad up. Let me find it real quick. Launchpad. Had a beat going, just, you know, random beat going, recorded it, then jumped into my recording section, and you get the option to share. So if I hit share, I can share the audio. It's going to see my iPad because we're all on the same network. I can just share it to my iPad. You can see the airdrop came up and it actually gave me the option to throw the song right into DJ. Or I could have threw it into um, Launchpad, Blockswave, or save it to the iCloud drive. But the fact that I can just save it right into the DJ app is really cool because I just hit DJ and that song starts playing right there. I made it on this iPhone, but then I airdropped it to the app itself. And from there, I can just manipulate it like, you know, it was locally on. Actually, it is locally on there, but I believe it's temporary because some of the testing that I've done so far, after closing out the um, app and then coming back to it later on, it, 
it's grayed out. It tells me that the song's no longer on the device. So I think when I airdrop it like that, that's just a very um, temporary um, file sharing. But once the app closes, I think it cleans house and it gets rid of the temporary stuff. But it's cool that you can be able to do that. And just like a regular turntable, you can do your pitch adjust, your speed, you can jump in here and get your EQs, your filters, um, loops, effects, and there you have it. So let's jump into the library management because that's gonna be important for you to be able to actually get songs in here to be playing with. So you have these two music notes up here, left and right. These pull up your library. You can get the library for each deck. You can't have it up at the same time. If I switch over to the next one, it opens up here on that side. But it's the same library. Um, you're just gonna, you're limited to working with one deck as you're flipping through your songs. So these are songs that I all airdropped over here prior to so that we have something to play around with. So when you're flipping through your library, you can see it shows you the key of the song, it shows you the length of the song and the BPM of the song. So you're able to make some decisions about what you wanna play pretty quickly without having to kind of think about what that song sounds like. So you kind of know, okay, we're doing some house stuff. So on that deck, I'm gonna let this song play. And then I forgot to mention, this is your crossfader down here. And it's touch sensitive as well. It, it, it reacts to your touch. So, and this is on a pretty smooth curve for mixing because I don't. You're not going to do any turntablist DJing, scratching type stuff on here. You're just going to be mixing, getting good transitions. So, got this song playing here. Let me go into my EQs and stuff. Make sure everything is there. All right, cool. Now I'm going to go over to this deck right here, and I'm going to pull up. Uh, let's see, maybe this one, Timeless Crowd. So, if I jump back over there. And one thing about this app, you have to go into the app and you have to make the settings that uh, kind of apply to how you're gonna be moving around in the software. Because one thing I did notice is that uh, right now it's set to load the song or play the song when you load it. And fortunately, you didn't really hear that because I had the crossfader all the way over to the left because that's how I normally play. I don't, some DJs keep their uh, fader in the middle and they just do a lot more button pressing. But me, I like to um, mix my stuff over and manually adjust the uh, tempo or other settings. So we got this song going. And then let's hear this song that I just loaded on this deck. All right, so they're about the same BPM. One, yeah, they're the exact same BPM. You got that first cue point marked. I'm gonna bring the needle up a little bit more with into the song. So I wanna put a cue point right there. So I, I just set that cue point. That's a temporary cue point. I could have gone into here, uh, hit my cue points there and set that. Same thing, but I'd rather be able to see the deck while I'm doing it. And I'm only gonna use this one cue point for this uh, example. Um, I'm not gonna use sync because they're both the same speed. So no need for that, but let's go ahead and get that playing. I'll have my crossfader over here in the middle and you can just see how quickly it responds when I hit play. And if you don't feel like your uh, tapping in is perfect, you can always nudge it with the plus and minus buttons that are down here on the bottom. You can nudge forward or nudge it back. Stop it. Um, that nudging, that is basically simulating what I do when, you know, I got the turntable playing and um, using my finger on the side or even with the spindle just to slow it down 
a little bit just to get things right in sync. You can do that with the nudge, the plus and the minus buttons on um, the virtual deck. And it's funny because on these decks, these are basically controllers. They're not actual record players. These are controllers. And you can do the same thing with these um, Rain 12s by hitting, I believe it's the 33 and then hitting the 45, that's a nudge up, and 45 and hitting the 33 is a nudge down. That's a little um, Easter egg for those more advanced DJs that know about this particular gear right here. But uh, it's nice that they included that on the app that allows you to speed up and slow down uh, your track. So let's get that song going again. Let me look at the YouTube stream, I guess. I should take a look at that. Looks like we're good. All right, so let me get back into my studio. All right, so I got that going. And what I just did there was I used that quick start button to get it started at the right point. And then with my other finger, I just hit the play to keep it playing so I could release the button. So now you got both of those songs going. They're locked in. If I wanted to hit sync, this is why I do use sync. If I want, so I've got them synced up. Notice as I'm bringing down this pitch control of one, I'm bringing down the pitch control of the other, but I'm only using one finger. So that's why I like sync. It's my two favorite things about sync are being able to automatically jump to the speed of the other deck. That's like a, a good part of what you're doing if you're using instant doubles in Serato. So same thing. Another thing I like about it is the fact that it links up your pitch control. In Serato, that's called simple sync when you're just using it to match up the um, pitch speed and link up the pitch controls, that's simple sync. The more advanced sync is when you have to do beat gritting and you have to really prepare your tracks a little bit more for um, using that feature. So going back into the app, um, sync is handy for situations like that because you only have two hands. And if you're trying to flip through a menu and still adjust the speed, say I got these going. Let's bring them up. Let's unsync because right now they're at, and that's the thing about sync. They can get out of sync just because that sync button is engaged. If you move, you do a scratch or you touch the deck or you, you know, start and stop, then the sync of them being uh, locked in together is going to be broken, even though the light's on. The only thing that's going to be still synced is the pitch control. Because you saw I started that deck and that deck wasn't going, but the sync button was still there. The only thing that moved was the BPM. So, and now because sync isn't on, they're not moving. They're not linking up. So, um, that's just something to think about when you're using uh, this iPad for DJing with. You're going to have to really think about uh, doing things a little bit less traditional, but that's what you're doing just by simply using an iPad to DJ. So embrace what you're doing. You're thinking outside of the box. So let's uh, let's pull up something else, another song. Let's go with uh, something a little bit slower. This is a more of a hip hoppy vibe. So I'll let that play. Then we'll come over here and find something somewhat similar, but not the same exact beat. BPM. Let's go with this song. Let me pull my fader over. First, let me pull my fader over. I have to go into the settings. I'll show you that. In fact, let's do that now. Let's go into the settings. To get into the settings, because you're going to want to definitely um, customize this, you hit this uh, button at the top. The icon for the app is the white circle with the orange or yellowish, yellow orangish dot in the middle. You hit that and that brings up the different settings that you can put this in. Right now we're in just basic classic and that's what I was talking about earlier. Two decks and a, a mixer. That's classic DJing setup. Um, you want to, you, if you want to, you can go into two decks setup 
which is a little bit different and this gives you more view of the waveform and less view of the decks. You still have decks. That's what this little piece right here is. These are your decks. They're just um, not the forefront of the visualization on your iPad. They're not the biggest thing on there. They're just there for reference. You can see that they're spinning, you know that it's working, but you're getting more of the actual waveform. The waveform is very, um, it gives you a lot of information. You can tell just by looking at it where the kicks are, where the, the actual sounds are, the percussions, where the hits are. You can see if you are a little bit more familiar with the coloring, the colors on the waveform, just like in Serato, actually mean something. So I believe your dark reds, those are your bass, your heavy kicks, and the lighter blues, those are your um, hits, like your snares. You see with this red line going straight down the middle, and you see this piece right here, this tail or bluish thing, that's the actual snare. And as it crosses that red line, that's the sound of it hitting. Let's hit play. And you can kind of look at how the sound is crossing that red line. You notice that when it's reddish color, it's a kick mm, mm, or a bass. Mm, 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 mm. And then the blue ones or the lighter color ones are the higher notes. Cat, mm, mm, cat, 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 cat. So you can see it as it hits the, the red line. So that's what two deck setup looks like. You still get your crossfader. You still have, um, your ability to jump into uh, your loops. You can change the loops. That's your looping right there. You still got your cueing for your headphones. And then you can jump into here to get to a different layout of the same information we were looking at from the classic. But this way, that's what's cool about this setup. You can actually jump right into your cue points. You know, it's very easy to get pulled into just tapping at a beat real quick, but you can see your cue points more readily. You can get to those easily and then you still have your filter. You get your volume right there for the channel. And then filters and then EQ with a touch of a button here. So I kind of like this layout for the simple fact that the controls are a, a lot more available for you. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back out. So this is the main setup right here. You got your EQs over here this time. You got your pitch control and as you speed it up and slow it down you see that the waveform stretches out which is pretty dope. I wouldn't recommend scratching on the iPad but it is possible. So let's go ahead come back up here. If you go into four decks you're basically going to get something similar but instead of the horizontal waveforms you're going to have these vertical waveforms. Uh, it just allows you to pull up more stuff. It gives you more, it, it makes best use of the screen, you know, depending on what you want the focus of the screen to be. With this, this focus is more on the waveforms. You can pull up another one, same beat. And they each have a play button at the bottom. And you can play all four of them at the same time. You can sync them. It's going to sound horrible, but you can sync them. All right, remove that, remove that uh, off, and stop, stop, stop. Let's go back to another view. Uh, one deck. Why would you need one deck? Maybe you just need to play some music in the background for cocktail hour, and you already have a mix set up or a playlist set up and you just want it to fly go through those you can 
choose the one deck. And you'll notice here on the left, you get some options on to, as to where you want to get your music from and where you want to pull it in. You can choose the library that is within the DJ app itself. You can choose to go within your iTunes. You can choose um, SoundCloud if you have that signed in. You can go to Beatport if you're signed into there. You can do that. Um, some other apps as well, BeatSource, and you can pull up videos. You can actually DJ with videos from different sources as well. Yeah, you can do video DJing from an iPad using an app. So, and this is actually the app. I need to go back into that. The app is free to download. If you open up, if you want to open up the pro version or the pro features, which are some of the stuff I've been going over, it's five dollars a month. It's a subscription. So if you want to test it out, you can invest nothing and download the free version and just get your hands wet with it. Just download it from the app store and you can um, play around with it or you can take it a bit further and spend the five dollars and open up the pro version where you'll see all these features that I'm showing you through here. Um, so let's go back into another choice of um, setup. There's an auto mix setup. This is really when you want to be lazy and you just really are setting up um, sound and going about some other duties at your event. You just want to put the auto mix on and you can just choose what songs you want to go through. Um, it's crazy. You can actually even add Siri and tell Siri to uh, auto mix a certain playlist. If you have it already, you know, set up and named it, you can say, Hey, hey Siri, um, play the, the wedding playlist and it would play that. I had to pause it cause I didn't want it to jump up and start doing that. Uh, let's see, you can go back, hit that dot again up at the top. Um, then this is one of my more favorite parts of this app and this is what makes it so cool because you can do remixes on the fly because they have loops already added into the app and a lot of the loops i noticed are some of the same sound packs that the loops that they're using they're coming from the same sound packs that are used in um, the apps that we use over the past couple of weeks and even other apps that i've listened to and played with a lot of these free apps or a lot of these free libraries, they come with a lot of the same sounds. But you'll get you'll see as you play around with both those apps from like Launchpad and Blockswave, um, you, as you get into here, you'll hear some of these loops and you're like, oh, wow, these are the same songs. So let's um, jump into the looper section and you'll see the layout is almost identical to like what we had going on with uh, Blockswave. We have these little circles that you can trigger sounds and mix and match them to come up with beats. And I'm just randomly triggering these beats um, just to let you see or hear what kind of sounds come with this. In fact, now that I look at it, down here on the bottom, you can choose uh, what, at what sound packs. These are some of the basic sound packs that came with it. And this Hip Hop Fusion, I actually have a Hip Hop Fusion uh, sound pack within uh, Launchpad. So I knew those sounds were, or those loops were familiar, which is why I stated in the past few, and I'll state it in this episode as well, never just rely on using the loops as is because they're everywhere and everybody has access to them. So you just putting those stuff together is not very original. You have to really chop it up, uh, put some original sounds into the recording that were, or whatever you're doing but if you don't want to sound like everybody else don't rely on the loops so if we go back to the classic view we can get that grid situation going so i can pull up like say i got this beat going all right i can pull up 
this grid and it will give me some sounds that I can add to this beat right here to, you know, remix it basically. And you see the sounds are all synced up, basically. They, as I'm adding different sounds, they come in on beat. The tempo is there, the BPM is there. So you can do remixes of songs. I really wish I could pull up. I really wish I could pull up um, some commercial music without worrying about getting uh, flagged, but I've done this a couple of times playing around with it and you will get flagged playing with this. Let, well, let's try this. If we go into uh, music, let's see, my library, nope, let's go into music. I know I have, let's see. So I'm gonna stop that from playing right away so I don't wanna get the song hit. It's a popular song. It's Savage with uh, Beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion. But I want you to be able to see um, how you can actually get rid of different sounds. We're gonna use this neural. I'm gonna go, let's see. See, now if I go here. So using this little button right here, I'm able to pull a slider up that will give me the option to have more music. Or bring the slider over, have more. So you get the acapella and what you're hearing, I believe the audio was coming in pretty clearly, so you could hear that these are not perfect acapellas or instrumentals. There's a hissiness to the sound. Um, there's um, just, it's just not, it ain't there. But let's try this. Let's go ahead, um, let me bring it up to, if I go here. And I'm going to pull up, because these beats from history should be all instrumentals. Since that Savage is about 80, is, is 84.4, mixing it with a 90 BPM song is not that big of a stretch. If I sync them together, get that beat right there. This is going to sound not great, but I want you to see what it's like when you do using an acapella to do a remix. So let's go back here. See? So that was in this file is this is the song I downloaded from um, iTunes. If I go back into the neural um, feature and pull the slider down. Go back to the start. Now, you see how I'm having to jump back and forth to hit the neural button to choose whether I want, you know, that uh, vocal going or and then jump back to hit the, the trigger, the starting of it. That's why I think I would prefer to have uh, two deck going and we would have see right 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 so you hit play 
let's see how to get to the neural. The neural screen. See, that's what's so crazy about this app. There's so many different layouts that you can um, set it up with. When you jump from one layout, you get, you know, a feature that you want, but then you lose another one when you uh, jump back. So if I go back to the classic, I know I can get to the neural right there. It's on acapella. Go back there. Get that beat going. And I guess you can always switch view. So you can play, you can start playing in one mode, classic, and get an idea and execute it by jumping to the next mode for me would be two decks, and then I can jump in, in and out of my cue points like that. So you can see how you can do remixes with this app on the fly, especially if you know your music really well. Um, I think this is go uh, really going to be a game changer for the DJs that don't have access to all the bigger equipment. And what's I like about it is you can expand upon it once you do get access to the bigger equipment because using that same camera kit that I was using, let me grab it real quick, that same camera kit that I used to connect my um, launch pad is the same kit you can use to connect this to a uh, controller like the Pioneer. Um, uh, I think it's the DDJM 200 or the DDJM 400. Those, um, they have this app has a whole list of controllers that you can connect to your iPad, so you can have the actual buttons and knobs to press and play it live. The only thing is, you're playing it all off your iPad, so you can actually eliminate the laptop from certain DJ rigs depending on uh, what you're trying to do. So if you have um, a small barbecue that you're DJing and you don't want to bring your laptop out and you it's not that serious where you are going to be pulling and taking requests and doing all that stuff if you're just going to be there playing the music that you brought with you then that type of setup would be really great with you know a portable speaker especially um, now a lot more portable speakers that are battery battery powered are coming out that allow you to you know have a 10 12 inch speaker with multiple inputs like I think the JBL Eon 1 is a great example of a um, speaker that you would use in conjunction with this or if you don't have the need for battery power the Harbinger uh, Vary V2312 which is one I reviewed on my channel about a year ago you can look at those as an option to combine with this. And in fact, this is something I actually do from time to time on the deck. I'll just take this or maybe even bring out my um, portable turntable like I had set up on last, week, last week's episode. I hook that up and we'll just be connected to a speaker out on the deck and playing music, making music, remixing music. And using apps like this, you can really um, expand your performance or even just the things that you can do it's no longer just going from song a to song b now you're remixing songs um, and mixing them together so you're becoming more of an artist and i think that's very important for djs to start looking into um, don't just be the person who plays one song and plays the next song you have to have some kind of creativity to you to your performance and if that means, you know, coming up with crazy blends and remixes on the fly, then do that as well. You can also use this to launch your way into making music for yourself, which is something we covered in the previous two episodes. You know, all this can be done from your phone or your iPad. The app on the iPad looks pretty much the same as it does on the iPhone, except for 
the iPad takes a bit more advantage of the um, screen real estate that you have. You have a lot more room to spread out and put stuff. With the iPhone, there are some screens you have to flip back and forth um, to get into different menus or get, get into different options. But this is like one of my favorite apps to use on my devices, mobile devices now because it really just allows me to come up with some ideas even when I'm just out and about. As long as I have this with me, um, I can just create music and add it to the library and mix right there. Let's go back into classic view. We got about eight minutes left on this, so let's look at a couple of more features before we get out of here. Um, if you go into this view right here, I hit the little blue waveform in the middle. It pulled up. You still have your decks, but you get the waveform right there as well. And you, either way, you can touch the record if you want to move it back and forth, or you can grab it on the screen. There is a little bit of a delay. It feels like a, almost like a little bounce to it as I'm gra grabbing the, um, the waveform and moving it back and forth. But I don't really see myself doing that a lot. The only reason I'm going to be using my finger to move this waveform is if I want to be able to set a cue point. Then I'm trying to get accurate with it. That's when I'll do that. Um, if you go here, we already talked about the grids. Let's see. If I go into neural, okay, I got the acapella going. What if I go here? Let's go here. A little quick remix. There's so much you can do with the be with being able to grab these acapellas and then you have this library of beats that you can pull up to add to it to do remixes. This is just so dope. And then you can even jump in here and you got your sound effects already loaded in. There's just so much you can do with this as far as remixing and um, doing things on the fly. Uh, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot to learn. You got to get familiar with the sounds that are there and loaded into the app. You got to want to be able to mark your cue points uh, with your song so you know how to jump in and out of the songs. You want to get familiar with the different layouts and how to um, jump around. And also you got to get your timing and your speed with it because as you can see as I'm jumping in between different settings Sometimes I have to tap multiple times. Sometimes I have to wait for the screen to come back up. So this is not some something you would use as a de battle DJ that's scratching and doing all kinds of quick mixing and jumping in and out of stuff. This is something that you have to really think and be aware of what you're doing as you're jumping through these menus and pulling up the different sounds. So um, this is DJ Pro. It's available in the iPad or the Apple App Store. You can download it for free. Um, they also do make a version for your laptop and your desktop. I think there's also a PC version as well. And that version for your computer, whether it be Mac or PC, it's $50. So it's not cheap, but it is very powerful. And if you like what it does on the iPad, you should wait to see what it can do on the actual laptop as well. Uh, I've seen some people online in different Facebook groups even say that they are jumping ship from Serato and going into using DJ Pro. I don't have enough experience with the laptop version of it to say whether or not you know that sounds like something that's feasible, but uh, just 
thinking about all the features that it has and all the things that you can do with this software, I think maybe depending on the type of DJ that they are, that might be a good thing for them if they're into doing remixes. If they play a lot more of dance music, EDM type stuff, then that might be a good thing for them. You know, Tractor was a good program or is a good program for the producer type DJ, but it's just a little bit more complicated. This might be an alternative for somebody who doesn't want to learn the ins and outs of Tractor. Now, uh, I know I said I was going to look at a couple of different apps, but I'm almost at the hour mark, and I've spent so much time looking at this app um, just because I'm really kind of in love with all the features that it does. But there is another app that you can use, and that is Tractor DJ. Tractor makes a DJing app for the iPad as well. Um, it's not exactly the same, or it's not the same as what you get on the laptop or desktop version of it, but we can jump into that real quick just so I can show uh, some love to another app besides just uh, DJ Pro. Tractor DJ right here. This gives you a somewhat similar uh, layout as far as like um, with the waveforms except you get a lot more focus you get more focus on the waveform and there's no virtual deck spinning around uh, you get artwork available like you see in the top left corner uh, these are songs that I'm probably not gonna play a whole lot of because I don't want to get flagged but these are songs that are within my library if you want to load a song from the deck you do the same thing you just tap on the um, picture of the record on the deck and it pulls up your library you can pull up um, different songs whatever song you like you can just slide load up to deck A and it loads it up there uh, if I want to do that for the bottom I can do load down and it loads it there uh, so that's that crossfader right here which is the focus or the sound coming from this bottom deck B or verse deck uh, A. You can jump into your effects just by hitting the effects button and similarly to the other app you get this pad right here where you can slide your finger over and you can adjust the effect. So if I had flanger going so you can you know use the finger to adjust those effects and you can pull up different effects you get your delay you can get your gator you can hold it down pull it down and you can choose other effects like uh, your beat masher your reverse transpose filters uh, you hit this button over here on the right where it says EQ that pulls up your three band equalizer you can hit your bass, mids, and trebles, and then also your volume. Switch over here, you get your filter. Once again, use your finger to slide over, and that allows you to uh, affect your filter. Um, so it's a lot of the same features and same controls. They're just laid out differently. Uh, I use this pri pretty much before, I, until I found out about the uh, DJ Pro app and put some time into it. This is what I was using for my backup when I would set this up or use it as a ceremony system for weddings. Um, I would have my music on my playlist already loaded up on here and this would just, I would just be playing from one song to the next. Not a whole lot of difficult mixing going on, just trying to get from song A to song B. As you can see, the other app, DJ Pro, allows you to do a whole lot more of uh, production and remixing and creating music so that is definitely a thing in that favor that's why I would you know definitely look at getting that app but for I think Tractor DJ this app right here is ten dollars on the App Store so you can't really go wrong with this this definitely gives you a lot of um, options for uh, or a lot of yeah, it gives you a lot of options. That's the word I'm looking for. Options to be able to control your music with your EQ, your effects. You can loop. Um, you can uh, hit your cue points. You can create multiple cue points and trigger them as well. 
they use the screen space a lot differently and I do kind of like the way they use it because I can just pull it up real quick if I don't want to look like my if I don't want to look at my cue points I can just tap that flag and it goes away or it comes out if I don't want to uh, do that little looping freeze I can just turn that on and off uh, you can get into your library it's a lot more responsive for jumping in and out of screens I will say that this app does jump in and out of stuff a lot easier um, just load pulls it right up throws it in there and you can just play from right there but let's see you got your clock up there your battery time so just a lot of basic stuff I mean it's a very basic program but it's been around for quite a while and I've been using this thing for years uh, hopefully you know they'll put some time native instruments will put some time into upgrading this um, app but it's definitely an alternative for you to look at Besides just um, DJ Pro, which is, you know, what we discussed pretty much for all this whole session. But now with all that said and done, we are here at the uh, end of this week's session. I hope so far you people have been learning and, you know, finding something to, you know, look into based off of what you watched on this uh, series. This is the third week. Next week is the last week. Uh, we just want to once again give a big shout out to the Fulton County um, Board of Commissioners for making this whole thing possible. Um, they definitely you know, stepped up to the plate during this uh, Corona COVID-19 uh, pandemic and have provided a way for artists such as myself to be able to continue to spread the word and um, continue on with our craft. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You can hit me up on email, djlogic26 at Hotmail, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. I am Logistical Styles, so just type that in, and you can reach out with some questions that you may have. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to this channel so you can get notifications when we do the next episodes and when I do post up new videos, because I am um, a lot more frequent with my postings. This channel is all pretty much about DJing related stuff and some live streaming and production. So if you're into any of that stuff and you want to get some tips, pointers, or even just um, find out some or check out some equipment reviews, just hit that subscribe button and we will keep you posted whenever new content comes out. So with all that said and done, I appreciate you all for um, checking out the um, workshop. And tune in next week, 7 o'clock, same time for the final episode of Mobile Music Making and DJing Workshop. Peace.